What's up, what's up, everyone? It is time to make up your mind with me, Mandy. And today's guest, I'm very, very excited. He's a very dear friend of mine. Yes, I'm going to make you wait. He's a very dear friend of mine, and I'm very, very grateful that he's here because his story is absolutely amazing. Mm. His name is Andrew Velasquez. Hi, babe. How are you? I'm amazing. How are you today? Amazing as well. So proud of you. Excited to be here with you. Thank you. I'm really yes. happy to have you. Yes. We did it. I've been talking about this for a while. Forever. <laughs> but um, I want to introduce Andrew. So he is a professional makeup artist, over 20 years in the industry, mm -hmm. hairstyling. He has his own salon. And we met on American Beauty Star. Yeah, almost five years ago. So crazy. That's so crazy. It was back in 2017. Yeah. And um, it was a hair and makeup competition show, if uh, nobody here knows. It was right. on Lifetime. Mm -hmm. Adriana Lima was the host. Yes. Sir John was our mentor, Beyonce's right. makeup artist. Yeah. Amazing, amazing guests, uh, judges, yeah. and all that jazz. But um, I just want to kind of take, take it back to there because that's how sure. we met. And yeah. we've stayed friends yeah. over the years. Yeah. So I'm very grateful for that show. Same. Um, I want to kind of step into your whole process before you got an American yeah. Beauty star. That's fine. And then get into American Beauty star and then the after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? So okay. take it away, baby. We just yeah. want to hear your story. Yeah, awesome. Well, hi, everyone. Thank you so much for having me with Big Up Mandy. I'm so excited to be here with Big Up Your Mind. This is amazing. You've been talking about this podcast forever. I mean, mm -hmm. I feel like even back Two five years. years ago, like... Yeah. You had some idea about it on the show, like you want to do something bigger. And then two years ago, I was like, oh my God, it's a podcast. It's yeah. me. It's my voice. The concept. It's you. Exactly. So I'm very proud of you. And Thank you. I want to see it blossom and fruition and just like We're spread. We're butterflies, Exactly. Woo! Spread all the love that you need to. So That's my mission. I'm here for you. Um, Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, I'm from East LA, Boyle Heights, uh, Native American, uh, Mexican first generation. And art has always been my passion. That's where I started art school, cosmetology school, fashion school. Um, in the 90s, it was like a little difficult to grow up in that area yeah. because it's uh, it was run by gangs. So it was very like macho and uh, Catholic based. So everything was just like traditional, what masculine role, what feminine role is. So I kind of felt, you know, out of place. And I really had to like train myself to fit in and be like straight acting and just not be called out for being what's out of the norm of the male like role. Um, Could you share with the audience what you mean in, in regards to yeah, all this? Yeah, yeah, I mean, as a gay man, like I pretty much had to like be in the closet and just pretend that I, I wasn't. So I mm. wouldn't be called out and like bullied and jumped. Exactly. So, and then of course, what's the first thing that I love is like Madonna, makeup, arts, like all the things that are super gay. And it's out creative. Of, exactly. I don't want to say gay, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's creative. Well, I mean, gay is happy for me, so I'm fine with saying that. And I am gay, so I can't say it. So anyhow, I, um, yeah, I think I like just trained myself to, like I said, fit in and um, have this like, you know, kind of like persona to like, just like blend. But obviously like growing up in the 90s, experimenting with fashion, hair, makeup and like wardrobe, I like really took that as a um, myself of expression and that's like what I wanted to use because that's the only thing I had to control over that makes total sense yeah when you, you know, say it like that yeah yeah because like my dad worked all the time he was a mechanic during the day uh tow truck driver at night and then my mom um was stay-at-home mom but you know also suffering from mental health issues and a uh, recovering alcoholic and so there was a lot of uh really just me like raising my brothers which I totally loved and I was okay with but that's I a feel lot like you a had kid. a lot of pressure. Like Big you, time. you had like a fake facade that you were trying to maintain and uphold yeah. that you weren't happy about. And yeah. then you were the oldest, and you had to take care of your brothers. Like that's a lot of responsibility yeah. when you're not even okay with yeah. yourself because you can't be yourself. Exactly. Yeah. No, I had to. Wow. You nailed it. Like I had to grow up fast and just be another parent and literally change diapers. I mean, I at some point was picking up one brother from one school on the bus as a 10 year old, like who does that? Oh my God. Yeah. And then meeting my mom when she was on <laughs> another like, bus that? to the hospital because they were always sick. There was always something with like four boys. There's always something going on. Yeah. So art and my self expression was literally my only Escape. outsource. Exactly. So, uh, finally, I think just kind of rebelling going through my, uh, I call it my adolescence, my adolescence. Your adolescence. Yeah, you exactly. guys, let's coin that term. Yeah. Hashtag I mean, adolescence. In the nineties, it was just like, club kid era i was just finally accepted by other like weird you know creative artists that were just 
embracing like this avant-garde lifestyle and it was amazing you know it's when i first met drag queens it's when i was first introduced to makeup to mac cosmetics which was like the brand like in the that was like the only like legitimately if nobody knows it was like the only makeup brand that like you heard of so it was like the number one because it was the only one that you really heard of other than like like cvs and like cover girl and like things like that which all that makeup is amazing yeah. You know, um, that, yeah, that's, that's crazy. Yeah. So do you feel like in a way, um, like makeup saved your life? Art Absolutely. Saved your life? Absolutely. 100%. I mean, makeup is a huge factor, but art in general, just because I'm fascinated with all forms of art mm-hmm. and now I'm an author. And so I, I write about it as well. And just visually, uh, it's, it's important to stimulate yourself like that. And that, I think that's 100% what saved my life. You know what I mean? Like going through those hard times, um, still in the closet and hiding from my mom and painting my my nails and like dyeing my hair and you know i remember i'll never forget the day i came out i was like, just gonna ask yeah, you that if you was, were comfortable sharing yeah absolutely. could you take us like down that yeah. down that like that day when yeah it was during the battle lessons era <laughs> I love it. i'm sorry it's okay. <laughs> no it's okay i think this time i was in more of like a grunge kind of vibe and so i was all black black you know chip nails and I was drinking wine because Mor- <laughs> I was listening to like Morrissey and the Smiths and uh, Nirvana. And I think my friends were over and we ditched school and we were just talking about like what we want to pursue in life and what our dreams were and what we want to accomplish. And then just kind of really feeling discouraged because I didn't really see anybody like me, like mm. in the mainstream that was doing the things that I wanted to do. So, you know, just kind of going into depression and like, again, hiding a piece of myself and mom being a huge huge inspiration and the first person that supported like my journey and my passion for arts at this time was like very um aggressive with me and just kind of wanting to know like what's i know she was concerned i knew it came from a good place maybe not at the time but now in you know in uh, In exactly and just reflecting i can see that like as a mother she was doing what she could and with with the knowledge that she had but um yeah, I mean, I hid for a long time. And I, and I had this little studio in front of my parents' house in Boy Heights. And so that was cool because I had my own little privacy mm-hmm. um, where I could draw and paint and sculpt and do all the things that I wanted to do. But um, this one particular day, we got in this huge fight. Um, and she was like, what are you doing with your hair? What are you doing with your nails? Like, why are you looking like a girl? Like, what's happening? There's just something you need to tell me. And then I finally was just like, yes, I'm gay. Like, I, And I just came out like... How did it feel? scary and vulnerable like in the moment yeah yeah 100 you just blurted it out just blurted it out like i literally yelled it yes i'm gay like that must have felt so freeing it was but it was also like fuck what did i just like well i can't take it out yeah you can cuss it's fine sorry no don't be sorry um we like cussing around here yeah i was like did i just do something wrong is she gonna hate me like is the one person that was always there for me gonna reject me now and my arms like twitching thinking about oh it. Oh my god. Yeah. She and she kinda did. She kinda did reject me, to be honest with you, at the time. At first, first. Yeah. And it I don't again, I don't think it was a place from harm. I think it was a place of protection and just wanting to have the best, you know, for me and for my future. And she knew like that was probably a harder lifestyle for me to have. And so she number one was like, Oh, you need to go pray. You need to go to church. You need to like that was like the route to I guess, ask for forgiveness. And so I ran away. Um, I ran away from her and I, I went back to my little studio. Um, and it was just like, the, honestly, it was the darkest point in my life. Like I went into this like really severe depression. I kept drinking that wine. I saw these Tylenol PM pills that were sitting right next to my bed. And I was like, right, I'm going to pop one in. And then I popped another one and then I popped another one. And then, the the bottle was empty um and i just remember like kind of slowly passing out and um like going to the bathroom and just kind of like washing my face and there was this razor blade right there and i literally took so you still weren't you were still coherent i i was but i was kind of like in this subconscious like yeah like sedated kind of i was just really emotional and sad and felt betrayed because my mom wasn't accepting me at the time and so i thought you know i'm i'm like 15 so i'm thinking like well if if she's not gonna 
accept me for who I am than who else is, you know, yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah. Like, this is like the most important person in my life. And I honestly started like just kind of slicing. Yeah. I knocked out. Obviously it didn't happen. I woke up the next day and I was Thank like, God. yeah, I rinsed off a little bit. I'm like, well, I guess I'm going to go to school. So I went to Still school. Still supposed to be here. Yeah. I went to school. I, um, you know, put on my like black hoodie and I just, my Jansport backpack and my Jansport Doc shadow. Martens. Yes. And I went to school and I think I was in second period and I got a call from my um, school counselor that said my mom called them because she was a nosy Mexican mother and walked into my place and saw the mess and saw the razor blade and saw the empty pill bottle and and called and and um, said that she thought, you know, I was in danger. Sure enough, they called me in. They were like, your mom's concerned. We need to see your wrists. And long story short, I was walked into the quad center area of my high school and they're like, we can't let you out of our sight at this point because you're a minor. And so they're like causing a scene at school too. Well, there's so nobody the whole- there yet, oh, thank God. but it okay. still was like, and it was close. Okay. Then I hear sirens and you know, right. And then this, am- I'm like, Oh, with the city, there's always sirens, yeah, but, yeah, we're in LA. but the doors open and this ambulance is coming into the quad area. I know. And I'm like, Oh shit, is this for me? Like, this is so dramatic. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> the bell rings. The students come out, the ambulance gets there, and I'm walking into the ambulance while my friends watch me, like, go into the ambulance. I uh, was admitted to psych ward 5150 for uh, a couple weeks and had therapy. I met another artist in there. His name was Francisco. I kind of consider him an angel because he literally was the one that, like, shook, shook the reality of what was going on. He's like, you have so much light. You have so much passion and the art that you're weird because we're all creating art there and he wrote me these like beautiful poems and so honestly it was because of that moment that I was like I don't want to die like I want to pursue my passion I want to pursue my craft and and then I discovered therapy and to this day I'm in therapy because of that can I stop you right there how so you were 15 all this happened so when did it start getting better like how long was it when with your mom like with your mom with you with you feeling like she Mm -hmm. accepted you I mean after you came out probably like a good couple of years Dang. like it was a lot of work so it was still struggle yeah we had family time. therapy i had my own therapy so you jumped into therapy with yeah. the whole like paramedic situation at the school i mean that That's was the only way i was able to get out and i was on house arrest like they had to like watch Jeez. me yeah because i was like a uh, red flag so are you happy that your mom did that because you wouldn't have found therapy, right? Yes. Now I can say that like now. as a 40 mm-hmm. year old man, but at the time as a 15 year old kid, no, I, I hated her. I was yeah. like pissed. Of I was course. like, you of locked course. me away like a freaking, you course. know, pet. but no, you're right. Like I, like if I didn't experience that, I wouldn't have realized that there is a light on the other side of that darkness, that there is a way that you can ask for help and, you know, follow your passions and break out of this trauma. And through that, I realized that I can create power. You know what I mean? Through the the power of trauma, I can create and actually uh, fruition my dreams and make them come true. I want to ask you a question. Because mm-hmm. I, I, something that you said earlier, you know how you said like, you know, you didn't really have anybody to look up to at that time of what you wanted to be. Right. So this is just an opinion. There's no wrong. There's no right answer. Mm-hmm. Whatever. I just this is something that I'm interested in asking, and I want my listener. I just feel like this is a really good topic. Sure. Why is it that when we have a vision and we don't have somebody that already has that, we look down on it as like we can't do it? Why can't we be the first ones to do it and create a legacy? Because humans. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because humans are based their main um, focus that their brain is trained to focus on is fear. So when you're constantly basing your decisions off of fear, of course, you're not going to believe in yourself. Of course, you're not going to believe that little you can create. It's our ego. Right. That that causes fear. Yeah. So it's just finding this balance with your mind, body and soul that you can you can break out of that little voice that is your inner saboteur telling you that you can't do it. Um, And I mean, that's my whole life. Like I've been battling through that forever and. And I have, like, uh, overcome it in so many ways. I mean, when I met you, like, I never thought I would be on a reality competition show. Like, I was always behind the camera, helping the same, stars, same, doing their hair and their same. makeup. Same, It was such a trip. And then all of a sudden, now we're, we're in the, the camera. And, and then we, I was like, are we yeah. going to get our makeup done? You're like, no. We're like, yeah. um, that's cool. Like, so, I mean, like, things like that. Like, it's, yeah. like, anybody that's creative or anybody that is um, suffering from any kind of depression or trauma, 
face that fear, like take those risks because that's the only way you're going to be able to like find out your true potential. You know what I mean? I love that. I yeah. love that. Okay. It's true. Okay. So what have you learned from, how many years have you been in therapy? 30, 35, 15 yeah. to 40. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. I'm not really good. <laughs> Apparently I am. You're that. pretty. You're pretty. Um, uh, I forgot my question. <laughs> oh, um, so what have you learned through mm-hmm. those 15 years? Like if, if what are three very important things you took away and that you would like to share with, with our listeners? Well, now, I mean, I've, I've seen so many therapists. First of all, um, you have to, like, it's like dating. You have to find somebody that you're so compatible with. So you have to find someone that you feel safe with, that is a safe space that you can be vulnerable and 100% authentic and honest about. Because if you're not, then you're never really going to get down to the Business, truth yeah. and the work, right? Uh, number two is... Um, I mean, realizing that in after like in reflection and just in hindsight, like it's always been in me, like the the answers have literally always been within me. I've just been too distracted and too uh, based off fear to see it. You know what I mean? Totally. So I think it's kind of comparison, comparison, uh, comparing to an alcoholic that hits rock bottom Mm -hmm. in order for them to find sobriety in their um, or any kind of addictive substance abuse is like you have to hit rock bottom in order to climb back up and to really find your like true you get sick potential. of your own shit exactly literally mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah i mean it was through therapy that i discovered like oh you mean like i've always had that like i have that light i have that like special little gift that like voice you know what i mean i had to ta- exactly i had to tap into it and like and open it up and and trauma was really the way to do it you know what i mean so yeah i'm super grateful for that and then Third is... I love, um, I love that he's so dedicated to doing these three Third lives. is that after experiencing so many types of therapy, they, at the end, or during a good portion of it, when we're, like, really in it, they're like, you know what? Have you ever thought about being a therapist? Because you're a really good speaker. And you, I, I find sometimes I'm asking them, like, how are you doing today? Tell yeah, me yeah, about yeah, your yeah. day. I do the same thing. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? And that's because we're, we're nurturers. We're we un- care, yeah. an empath, and I just... I do. I care about others and their well-being. And and that's, I think, why I attract the people around me, including, like, yourself. And, oh, like, my God. We got to tell the story. <laughs> on the show, you guys, on oh American Beauty God. Star, like, oh I, there was something about Little Mandy makeup that, Makeup Mandy, that I was drawn towards. And I'm like, she's gorgeous. Yes, I know she's talented. She's energetic. But there was something else. I'm like... I feel like I need to go over there and just my essential her, like, oils. Yeah, like I, I was freaking yeah. the fuck out, you guys. Well, again, like he said, like remember, we're always behind, behind the, the camera. camera. So this time we got picked, and it's like for us, or at least speaking for myself, but mm-hmm. I know you can relate because yeah. we do a lot of the same things. Yeah. For myself, it's like it wasn't just a reality competition show like oh fighting for love or we want to win a hundred thousand this is what we do every single day this is our our job Mm -hmm. this is our our reputation on the Mm -hmm. line so it's like there was a lot a lot more pressure than i think anybody else in again speaking for myself there was just a lot of freaking pressure and you don't want to look stupid you Mm want to do good you want to win you don't want to go home Mm -hmm. on the first episode you know what i mean it's like there's all that pressure and then also like you have to perform and then there's shit ton of cameras around it's hot we can't have the air on we have a time limit yeah like not to mention any (laughs) other like traumas or or not even traumas any other like issues or obligations that we had outside the show like we is tapping into it you know what i'm saying like that i was was going through a breakup at the time exactly and so yeah there was something about that that i was like empathetic towards i'm like well, because you I saw mean, me putting on my, yeah. my my essential oils and I had lavender, which is like a stress reliever yeah. and like whatever. So I'm over here like, and at, by the end of like, I want to say like by like the third episode, I had everybody lining up before we went out of the green room to get their <laughs> essential oil. Do you yeah, remember that? We needed our little we sanctuary. We all had our essential yeah. oil, but yeah, you were just like, I was over there freaking out. And mm-hmm. then I just remember like, breathe. You came over. It was in the, the green moment. room, right? Mm-hmm. You just came, kind of came over to me mm-hmm. and like sat next to me. I just put my hand on your shoulder and I was like, listen, we got this. It's going to be all right. Like you. You can't control everything, whatever's happening outside. Like, let's just focus on here. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, no, it was this freaking scary moment. It was like, uh, you know, uh, for me, my mom was going through, like, the worst of her times uh, when while we were recording the show. Mm. So being away from her. Yeah, I mean, the only way I really was able to do the show was knowing that 
she had the medical attention that she needed. You know, she had just uh, recently experienced a divorce. They were selling the house. I was her power of attorney. Good thing is, though, Andrew, that we were filming in mm-hmm. Glendale. We filmed in Glendale Studios, and you lived in Glendale. Like, yeah. you lived in, well, you lived in yeah. L.A., whatever. So, yeah, yeah. like, at least you were in, like, other people had come from Arizona, Boston, right, right. U.K. But we were still put up in a hotel. We were like, we were away for three yeah, and a half yeah, weeks. Yeah, we yeah, were quarantined exactly. before quarantine was a coin term. Yeah. We were quarantined yeah. with chaperones yeah. in a hotel. Yeah, and then two weeks prior to that, I I was quarantined with uh, America's Next Top Model as a hairstylist working on that show, oh, which wow. was pretty cool because they I was, let you. Yeah, yeah. There was no I, conflict to Anderson contract. No, because I was a hairstylist for one, with and then an you make up, and then I was a makeup artist as a competitor for another one. You know mm. what I mean? So it was two different roles. But you were still on television. Yeah, but I was credited as a behind the scenes versus. Oh, got you, got you, got like you. A, yeah, 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 yeah. Personality. That makes sense. So, but it was cool because I was able to look at Tyra as she is a creative director and like embrace her and like be a sponge and really channel that in because I used that for our show when we were the creative directors. Oh, thank you. No, honestly, like it was like there were the people like like I feel like Mitchell was nervous every single episode. Yeah. Corey didn't give Corey was just like, whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm over here like gonna have a mental breakdown yeah. every single episode. We all time's had falling and Yeah, t- time was just time wouldn't time was in her own time zone. Yeah. She was focused. Yeah. Yeah. So I many mean, personalities I have so to cool. Thank uh therapy for that yeah. and just discovering like meditation and the self-development like work that I've been doing a lot and the spiritual work that I've been doing a lot. To... Can you share some of that with us? Yeah, like of what, of what you do, like your morning routine, everything, because yeah. honestly, Andrew is so calming, like just to be around <laughs> him. He's very like nurturing and very calming and you just feel really chill around him. So it's Thank like, you. I feel like you're welcome. I feel like everybody should get to that point where they have mm-hmm. that, control mentally physically yeah. all of that and i feel like you've nailed that obviously we can all get better and you're probably still growing yes but i would love for you to share yeah. you know how you got here yeah. and, and what helps you in your daily life for sure i mean i think as the oldest of four boys and helping raise my siblings and having an alcoholic mother at the time yeah. and then absent father i had no choice so at that point like i was literally the the foundation of like the household like i I kept everything kind of balanced and neutral. If there was chaos, I would want to like fix it and uh, somehow be a part of like the balance of it. And so I'm sure that's where like the root is from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That pushed you, nudged you, yeah. Because if you think about the first 10 years of your life, that's that's what's going to shape you forever. Yeah, childhood trauma is the real thing. Yeah, but also good stuff. So the good (laughs) things, and yes, the bad things that have happened the first 10 years of your life is what shapes your adulthood. Yeah. But that's not concrete, and that doesn't right. mean that you can... We have the power to change correct. that. Correct, yeah. But again, you have to believe it, you have to want it, and you have to um, tap into that like other sixth sense that you... So I have only discovered really through therapy and through uh, therapy. And, that's and meditation. meditation. So that's, I know yeah. you're really big on meditation. Do you do like so, yes. Kundalini and all that? Not on... It's very basic. Okay. Like, meditation is very basic. It's really just finding a way to separate my like soul with away from my, I know this sounds a little abstract. I'm understanding all of it. It sounds abstract for someone that maybe is not familiar with it, but it's a really out of body experience for me. Mm -hmm. So I think it comes number one from breath, inhaling through the nose, exhaling through the mouth and and holding it at the top for a good three seconds. Uh, Doing this for, you know, a good like 60 seconds for a good minute. That will allow you to like calm your heart, calm your lungs, calm your soul. And then through that, you start to visualize. And so I go into more gratitude. So I, I literally just start to practice gratitude for life, practice gratitude for the hardships, practice gratitude for um, coming out of the closet. I'm grateful Even for... Even being gra- grateful be when, you're, when everything's going great. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then with that, I get this overwhelming sense of just light, you know, and... That's what life is. Life is a balance of light and darkness. So, so we, we have true. The there is no gray. I really don't think there's a gray area. Like we have, we a have choice. the choice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, we are, you, we're the gray. So we have the choice to choose if we want to go to light. I love that. Yeah, I love that. And, have you heard of Wim, Wim Hof breathing? Yes. So yes. I actually did that. Okay. Nice. It is so. It's like the diet. Incre- no, wait, it is yeah. just so amazing and incredible of what your mind is capable of. Mm-hmm. I held my breath mm-hmm. 
for a minute and a half, like on my couch, just by yeah. practicing the Wim Hof breathe. And like yeah. you actually, Wim Hof breathing actually releases DMT as well. It's right. an actual natural way to release DMT, but that's a whole nother subject. Yeah. But I was just saying like, just from the breath work of mm-hmm. what you're talking about, mm-hmm. I practiced it mm-hmm. and it was incredible. Yeah. What I think I actually held my breath for two minutes as yeah. well. It was like a whole seven minute exercise and like yeah. he walks you through it and everything. And it's, you really are in your mind. Like you're not yeah. your body, you're in your mind. But oh it's my God, also, and your mind is your most powerful tool. It is so powerful. You can and retrain also, it too. A good way to meditate too is with amethyst on your third eye. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing that and I've been doing the pineal gland meditations. And beautiful. When I do these meditations, I fall asleep within maybe 20 minutes and I mm-hmm. wait, I, I sleep. Like so deep, I'm sleeping through my alarms. I'm okay, so you're more of an evening meditator. I, I, I meditate, like this morning I meditated at 5.30 in the morning nice. and I fell asleep yeah. for a couple more hours and then I woke up. But when you wake up from that, right. and that pineal gland, like you really do feel different right. and you really do feel awake and you look at life different, you right. feel different, you exude yeah. different energy. It's it's yeah. so amazing. There's so many different types of meditation. So whatever resonates with you and your followers, like just, just do it, you know? Mm-hmm at least i would say at least five minutes you know a day yes yeah yes. it doesn't have to be in the morning it can be whenever for me it works best in the morning but sometimes honestly the like, best time to I, meditate is right after you wake up yeah or even like at 3 p.m sometimes i just need that like middle like of the day kind of to Grounding. break the monotony yeah. yeah but i have also discovered other forms of therapy like i said there's so many um i've done um through uh, a spiritual mentor i've done like uh, a cleansing i've done Reiki healing? Yes. Where I, I mean, it's a combination. It has Reiki involved. It has uh, reading involved. There's tarot involved. There's crystals. But I've literally tra- I've traveled like in outer space through that. Like I have gone Actual out of my projection. body. Exactly. And like I have discovered, you know, Other I've been able to see like down from above this room and see just my body as like a shell. Another way that um, I've discovered this was in New Orleans. There's a place called Flow Nola. And it's, do you remember the music video, Bad Romance with Lady Gaga? It's like this shell. Yeah. So it's picture that, this like huge white shell that you open up, you just row nude and the shell gets filled up with magnesium based sea salt water. You're it's, it's salt, it's uh, uh, salt water. Correct. And it's it's at room, it's at body temperature. So you go in and at first I'm like, well, wait, where am I going to put my head? Like. Oh, it's flow. Exactly. You flow. It's a float Nola. Tank. Yeah. I've been wanting to do this. It's incredible. Had, like so many did. athletes do this. So many celebrities and just people that like are in high stress pace environments go to this to like reset their, their system. It's like in Stranger I mean? Things. Absolutely. It's the same exact thing of what Eleven did. It's 90 minutes it's in crazy. complete darkness. You put earbuds in so it's complete silence. And at first there are sound bath waves that like uh, transfer you into right. the experience. Right. And then... You're out. I'm not going to lie, though. At first, I was a little scared. I went through some demons, like Stranger Things, and I saw that monster coming out. Demogorgon! But once you get past those, like, inner saboteurs and that, like, voice, then you go into this amazing, peaceful, like, divinity that I... I I I want to do that. It's like ecstasy. I can't even experience it. I wasn't high, but I felt high off of Because it's our natural endorphins inside of our body that we produce. I felt high off of life and love and... Like, again, had that out-of-body experience. All of a sudden, my husband was doing the same thing in the next room wow. in his own shell. And I felt him. It's like going back into the egg of being an embryo. Oh, my God. 100%. It is. That's like, I, I, I've been, I've been, I don't know if you watch Gaia. You guys, get get Gaia Network. Please get Gaia, okay? I haven't checked it out. Like, well. you have no, It's amazing. And I watched, and they were talking about how it's going back to, to the embryo. Right. It's insane. 100%. I literally felt my mom's heartbeat at one point. I, I heard her praying to her mom, who is deceased, who I've never met her, praying to her as her God and saying, please bless this child. Please uh, make him special. Please I have make the sure chills. That, this yeah, is so please, cool. Like, I, I heard her praying all this while I was in this freaking pod. Like, that's crazy. You know what I mean? And feeling her heartbeat. And nobody can take away that experience no, 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 from no, no. you. Absolutely Ever. not. So, I mean... Again, like that was a tool and a resource for me to be able to tap in. Right. But now I've away from that. I, I can still grasp moments like that daily to help me kind of break out of like the matrix and whatever you want to call it. Like what we're, yeah. we're, what we're experiencing day by day with noise distractions and like fear and technology, blah, 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 everything, all that. Like, everything. I, I can still tap into that like regularly. And it's I'm amazing. so grateful for it because 
it continues to like save my life and just uh, balance me and just keep me focused on what really matters. Yes, know? yes. Mm-hmm. I love that. Oh my God, this yeah. is amazing. Okay. Well, fast forwarding, uh, you have your salon. How long have you had your salon? I know this is a crazy transition, That's but okay. I want to I want to <laughs> get I want to get, get into like where yeah. you're at today and yeah. what projects you have coming up. Yeah, absolutely. So how um, long have you had your studio? So I've been officially independent because uh, I, I used to be in retail cosmetics as well as freelancing. I think we all started that. Yeah, you have to. I mean, <laughs> I had 15 basic. years of my experience. 11 with Mac. It's worth uh, it. Tried all the roles. Uh, four years with Anastasia Beverly Hills. And so it's nine years now that I've wow. been on my own. How do you feel about that? Decade. Proud. Amazing, I mean, amazing. Like, I, I've always wanted to, like, and I think in my 20s, I was too fearful. I wasn't it's hard ready. to break away from that, but ready. I feel like you yeah. know. You know when you're like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, you feel like that's, I mean, and when you're a part of a company that large, you feel like that is all you can, you're capable of. You know what I mean? Totally, totally. So once you break out, you see that you can do other things on your own. Like, I wanted my own brand. Like, I want to represent just me. You yeah, know what I mean? for sure. So, yeah, it's been nine years on my own. Um I was five years just like freelancing. I had a studio. I was like one chair, 100 square feet. Then I had an assistant with two chairs, 200 square feet. And then now it's our fourth year. Evolution, baby. Yeah, fourth year at a 1600 square foot salon uh, where I I share with my business partner. She runs a spa portion. I run the hair salon portion. And yeah, it's a beautiful experience. And we're looking into having other locations and... I just recently finished writing my first book, my first memoir. Yes, let's get into Uh, that. Okay, let's get into it. So, Uh, so, okay, so you wrote your memoir book. Yes. Let's talk about how how and why. The process. And then we're going to give you guys a little sneak peek. 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 Just a little baby one. (laughs) Yeah, tiny because I can't reveal too much. I know, I know. But we got to get your your followers excited. Okay, so um, I'll be honest. I actually started when we met. I started on the show. Because we had a lot of downtime and we were told that, yeah, we were told that we were not allowed to bring like a lot of devices and stuff like that. So I bought, I brought an uh, old school iPod shuffle. I brought uh, a sketch pad to draw and I brought um, uh, to to write. So another like writing literature pad. Mm -hmm. And during our downtime, when we were back in our hotel rooms, that's how I started. I just started writing and I started drawing. I created this concept. Um. So I'm Mexican American, and as a kid, I grew up playing a lot of like traditional games like Loteria, and it's kind of like a Mexican bingo uh, game that has uh, like a tile collage of characters, and then you put a pinto bean when they call that collage or that specific character, and you put it on the like on the card. Okay. And you say bingo or Loteria when you're done, and if you win. Okay. So that specific style of art always resonated with me and then fast forward to when I started doing more spiritual work they also reminded me of like tarot cards because they look very similar and uh, I realized that each character symbolizes something and they have a meaning to what the card is so while on the show I started writing about my life and like my parents my brothers the houses we grew up in being you know a young uh, queer person and in the closet and then trauma and blah 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 and then And then I stopped while uh, we finished and wrapped the show. Well, this last quarantine after the pandemic and all that stuff is when I completed the writing. And so I wrote 30,000 words, 10 chapters. And last year, uh, 2021, in April, is when I started creating the artwork. So I drew everything up first, the concept based in homage to Loteria. So I chose 10 cards of this Loteria character that resonated with me and my story and my it's such an amazing thank you that's so amazing so i i casted the whole thing i produced it i hired the photographer the videographer we've documented everything so we have time lapse of the transformations we have the big reveal i've interviewed everyone that's been a part of the project we had a rap party recently that was so amazing i had fabricators i had assistants makeup artists i mean it was it was amazing and uh all and people you created all of that exactly That's so cool exactly and during this um holiday season is when i had some downtime to like finally wrap it up november 28th was my last shoot and that was the day that i could say it's a wrap and start collecting all the images i had an amazing so graphic. five years yeah in the it's been a five-year making project yeah the original concept writing while on the show mm-hmm. and then my actual writing completed 
during last quarantine. And then last year is when I started creating the visuals for it. So as a makeup artist, I love body art makeup. And so what I did is I took, um, well, let me rewind because I'm exposing myself and my story. I wanted to take nude models that are exposed, but celebrate their bodies with makeup, art, and culture. And so that's how I created the designs that are the covers of each chapter of my book. Okay. So cool. there's 10 body designs, 10. I'm not, I'm not like I know nothing about, I, I, I've seen it. It's amazing. <laughs> you have seen a sneak peek. It's not going to trust amazing. you and I wanted your opinion. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's just been such a beautiful experience. Like yeah. Mandy, when I like had the final shots that my amazing graphic team, um, help compile putting them in files and on my desktop compiling it into a book file and seeing the final product so oh, rewarding girl no i mean it was it you was cried. like it was like one of those out of body experiences <laughs> i've heard it was, I, I could tell i'm like you probably it was yourself. it was so beyond emotional i mean i i just wanted to hug little 10 year old andrew and tell him that you're gonna be all right like and then that's what i remind myself to this day Anytime I'm, I'm fearful, doubtful, and I want to share that with your audience please. too. Please, no, please. Yeah. Anytime you're feeling, you know, uh, stress or anxiety or panics or any kind of doubts, picture your 10 year old self. What do you want to tell them? What do you want to do? And the first thing I want to do is just hug him and just tell him it's going to be all right. Like you're going to survive this. You're going to overcome this. And here's the proof. The book is the proof. And that's... Congratulations. That scene, thank you so much. That yeah, you're scene, welcome. Like, uh, fruition, like these dreams that you've been wanting to accomplish for such a long time and a passion project that you want to fulfill and seeing it with your own hands, like happening in front of you. Ugh. Like if I die next year, I'm good. Like You're I'm like good. next year. You're not even like to write. No. You're like next year. Well, because I want to publish good. it. And, like, yeah, but we want you here out, longer so. than a year. We are here forever. <laughs> but I mean, like, that's how gratifying that moment was. Like, it was It's just... rewarding. And it's like also showing yourself what you're capable of yes. doing. And then yes. being like, okay, cool. I created that. Mm -hmm. And then what? what's next? Absolutely. You know what I mean? And also mm -hmm. I think what saves us mm -hmm. as humans, human mm -hmm. beings having this human experience is what you truly love yeah. like what makes you happy what do you love to do yeah tap into that passion yeah. and run with it yeah. create a career with like like you can monetize that it's doing yeah. what you love and back to the 10 year old think of that mentality honestly yeah it sounds you would have never thought you did that well not, would, not only yeah. that think of the mentality of your imagination and like we have to go back to, yes, to the like nostalgia. Opportunities are endless at that point. Like you think of Disneyland, you think of fantasy. Like you can still have those thoughts, and you can still have all of those like so goals, true. and still make them come true. And I'm I'm now realizing like twenty year old Andrew could not have done this. Thirty year old Andrew could not have done this. Crazy, you said that. Yeah, it had to be forty year old Andrew to complete this whole project to actually be in the right time at the right place. And when it's destined, you know what I mean? Like that's when it was timing is to everything. Absolutely. And also it's like, so we, we, in general, in gen generalization. Okay. It's like that negative connotation to like childhood trauma and all that jazz. Mm -hmm. But again, there's always a dark and there's always a light. And I think that tapping back into your childhood traumas will then show you what you need to work on. Mm -hmm. To then take you back to that nostalgic mindset right. to create what you're meant to do. Right. Woo! Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. True. I'm like, I was like trying to like. Word it. Yes. Yeah. Word it correctly. And it's like that gray space, like you're saying, mm -hmm. I think that's in between like that childhood, it's adolescent. Yeah, yeah. I think that's you. that gray space. Absolutely. So we want to get rid of that gray space and yes. pick the light. <laughs> yeah. And I, I want to share uh, with your, view, uh, your followers and your viewers, like another way that you can do that. And like now, if you're lost and you're just kind of looking for a reset um i'm doing this 30-day iron mind challenge i started uh the, the second day that i turned 40 because okay. i don't believe in new year's resolution so i wanted to start it on a new birthday either. year yeah. resolution versus a new year new year resolution does that make sense absolutely yeah, okay. and i love that better and so it this this works for me it might not work for others but it's it's a great way to tap into those um Voices, those powers, those lights, and break out of the the fears, the doubts, the that voice uh, telling you that you can do it, that little inner saboteur telling you that it's not going to happen and it's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So this is these are the ten things that I check off daily now to okay. keep track of that. And uh, now I do it in a thirty day consecutive um, 
pattern. So it creates good habits. And that is the average time frame for a human to create good, uh, good habits, break out of bad days. habits. Well, I'm doing 30. To, but yes, 21 it's days. technically is, 21, yeah. But I think 30 for me is a good, just even number and I like it because it's almost like a month basically. Right. So here's the order. Are you ready? Are yeah. You ready? Yeah. Everybody get your paper and pen out. And if you're in yes. a car driving, you can listen to this later. Make Pause sure you it save it. Five stars. Yes. We love you. Yes. All of that. Yes. <laughs> All right. So this is the order that works for me. Again, it could work for you in other ways but, mm. and for you too. So the first thing that I do um, it is practice gratitude. Um, and then that naturally lets me go into uh, practicing meditation. Mm. As I'm meditating, I also begin to visualize. And I visualize, exactly, manifest. You visualize things that you want to accomplish. Uh, During your gratitude portion, you you practice gratitude for things that you're grateful for, but even embracing things that have been challenging for you. So those dark moments, saying thank you for that too. Mm. Uh, Someone that you have... um, gotten in a fight with or someone a next boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend that you have had trauma with practice gratitude for that and it helps you naturally go into forgiveness as well which is very important because you're so hard you're forget. forgiving for not them you're forgiving for you to let go of that dark energy to open up more space for good energy and more light because again you're the great you gotta purge <clears throat> so meditation gratitude visualize the next thing that i do is journal there's something human um and and sensory about your hands writing down something verbally saying it using all your sensories and then feeling it with the touch of your hands um, and then seeing it visually happen in front of you it's like you're already putting it into the universe does that make sense 100 percent, i do so that goes into journaling uh the next one is probably my hardest one but I'm very proud. Today is day 22 You're out of the 30th. There. Yeah, I'm almost there. Um, actually, I think it's more. I think it's, I think it's 24. Yeah, I have like six more days. Okay, less than a week. So 24. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cold plower, a cold, cold shower. shower plunge. I was trying to yep. merge plunge and shower. All right. So let me brief you on this. It doesn't mean that you are going to necessarily take a cold shower right away. It can if you're brave for that, but that's the hardest one that's been for me because it's been so cold in LA and the weather's just been like freaking, you know, I did this during quarantine. So in the morning, the the that's the worst thing you want to do is take a cold shower, especially if you're sick or whatever. But um, so if it's hard for you, the what you want to do is like ease into it, maybe start with a lukewarm, but then at least two minutes of cold pure water, head to toe, just mm-hmm. sit there. And so that's where I, that's where I started. I'm at the point now where I just go cold. I don't Me too. Anymore. I was just going to yeah. say that during quarantine, my anxiety was so bad. I was like just taking cold showers and it was normal to it me. It shocks your system. It completely not, restart, recharges every single, like everything in your body. And not it, only you, is can, it you good, can't think of anything but how cold right. the water is. And not only is it good for your hair, skin, nails, heart, blood circulation, but mentally like facing that fear, that little voice, that voice still tells me, don't do it. Do you it. know what you do? Do you know what water. got me through it? What gets me through it? What? I'm, I say it's all in my mind. I'm right. powerful. It it's, it's all mental. I Absolutely. tell myself it's all mental. It's fine. And if you sit there and you tell yourself that, you, I swear you won't even feel the cold. And then you what won't. happens naturally, you take that practice into other parts of your life every day. Relationships, yes. career, yes. finances, yes. Like other things that are Carrying the groceries up from the car when there's too many. I got exactly. it. I do it. The gym, <laughs> fitness. Oh, so then that goes into fitness. Yeah. Exercising every day, yes. eating healthy every day. Um, no stimulants. Whatever that so means no for coffee, you. No. no coffee, no sugar, no uh, alcohol, um, no porn, no whatever stimulant means make to sure you. Make sure you had to make sure to say yeah, all of those things. <laughs> um, again, I, it's going to be different for each person. So, and then what's my last thing? Um, practicing kind acts for others, for strangers. Okay. Just one little kind act a day for a random stranger, yeah. whatever it may be. Helping a homeless person, giving them food. Uh, giving a smile to someone random, whatever that means for you, just practicing one small kind act to a stranger. Totally. Uh, yeah, all those things are I'm checking off every day. And honestly, a lot of that stuff I was already doing. Right. Uh, it's just kind of holding me accountable and sure. making a 30-day habit. So I practice more good habits and then break out of bad habits. For sure. I love yeah. that. I love that. I hope you guys all got that down. If not, again, you can come back to it. So before we take off, yeah. I want to. are we going to get to see the sneak peek? 
Yeah, I'm. I'm happy to show okay. you a little bit. I can't. Okay. Okay. Can't what, show you guys too much, but I'll show you. Whatever you're bit. willing to show, we are here for it. Okay. So I only have a digital version right now because. And this um, is fresh off the market. It is. I literally just updated the latest version today. Okay. Uh, so we're at the point where the book is done. It's completed. The visuals, all of it is done. Now we're pitching it. So we're looking to getting an agent. We're looking to getting publication. And what I, I'm learning all of this as a first time author is yeah. that you have to package it up as a proposal. And so I'm going to have my my reel, which is like a trailer for those of you that don't know what, what it like a sizzle Little is. Promotion. Exactly. And so that is going to be five minutes with... Um, the arts, the narrative, and just giving you a little sneak peek and insight of what you're going to experience as a reader. Um, but I do have some visuals that I can show you. And Please. It's called um, the book of the. We can do it the to, book the, is called to the camera right here. This camera or this, well, this should, camera right yeah. here. All right. So the book is called Love Is Art, Art Is Love, and why I chose that title is because for me, I can't have one, one without the other, and those two have literally saved my life. In Spanish, because everything in Spanish sounds more dramatic, it's Amor Es Arte, Arte Es Amor. So. This is the cover of the book, and it, again, it resembles um, the Mexican Tarot. bingo game called, which is similar to Tarot, car, uh, tarot Cards, Loteria. So I basically chose 10 cards. Uh, these are the first nine, and they're the covers of each chapter. And then the back of the book is going to have chapter 10, which is my biggest fear, and that's La Muerte, which is death. And yeah, so stay tuned because I will be having this um, published and I'll be uh, sharing the date with Mandy and your Please, podcast. Please, yes. And maybe I can come back and talk about the experience. For sure. Based off that, there's going to be an event, a premiere party. Let's do there's going to be art installation. There's going to be uh, an exhibit. I mean, it's just going to be a huge that I can't wait to have you um, be a part I'm of here for it. Well. You know, I'm always here to Thank support you. you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Okay, could you tell everybody where to find you? And could you spell out, obviously, your social media handles yeah, for our absolutely. listeners? So my name is Andrew Velasquez, uh, A-N-D-R-E-W-V-E-L-A-Z-Q-U-E-Z underscore on all social media handles. So Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And then for the book, it is uh, Amor es Arte uh, underscore Arte es Amor. So A-R-T-E-E-S-A-M-O-R underscore A-R-T-E-E-S-A-M-O-R. And that you can find on Facebook, Instagram. Uh, those are the only two handles at the moment. And the website is coming soon. So Beautiful. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I'm, I'm so proud, proud of you. I'm proud of us. And yeah, just, we did this. we're become, girl, like, yes. show, reality TV, doing our freelance, and then now Supporting each other. Yeah, exactly. All along dreams. the way. And also, now, Andrew is my hairstylist. Yes. So, a uh, shout out to the, to the inches, we honey. Her. She's yes. looking gorgeous, long and healthy. And you already know, my name is Amanda Terry. I am your host. I go by Makeup Mandy, and that is with an I. And you can find me on all platforms, Makeup underscore Mandy. Again, that's with an I. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please yes. give us five stars or whatever you feel like your heart um, five stars. wants to give us for uh, for uh, the podcast. And you can also follow the podcast, Make Up Your Mind, You Are. So Make Up You Are, Your Mind, underscore podcast. That is on Instagram. And YouTube is Make Up Your Mind Podcast. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I absolutely love you. And I can't wait till next time. Bye.